All right, folks. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on. Hopefully, the stream will stay up here. We have already started the match, and I'm turning down every them here. All right. By the way, uh, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube later on, uh, this is actually being streamed and recorded live. So uh, you know, this is uh, we're gonna have some technical difficulties, and we apologize for that. That kind of always happens with this sort of thing, but. Just bear with us, and it should be a fun cast. This is being done live. This is the MSL semifinals uh, between Jadong and Cal. And this is going to be a very, very epic series. We've been talking about it a little bit right uh, already before uh, we started recording this. We're going to talk about it more uh, later as well, obviously. I am Moltrap. I am here with Matt and Steve of Matt and Steve SC. And uh, we are actually doing, uh, a, a, you know, aside from the pros cast that, that Tasteless and Artosa have done, we are basically doing the first no lag uh, online streaming of a StarCraft game with English commentary here. We are yep. all in the same room at the same time. The mic and the video stream are coming from the same place, so there shouldn't be any lag at all. I'm really actually excited. Just you know, even if the games are crappy and and we all uh, have aneurysms in the middle of the third game, uh, I'm excited <laughs> just for the for the quality level that's going on here. It's cool to be bringing that kind of thing to you guys. So anyway. We do yeah. see a very, very quick pool here from Jadong, by the way. We were just talking a little bit earlier. We just did the Pro League game that these guys played uh, a couple days ago. And Jadong did a very, very quick pressure build with early Hydras and did a very quick bust. And we were thinking maybe he wanted to, you know, a lot of times players in these situations will use aggression to try and there you uh, go. get in the other players' heads. He's trying to move into some Zerglings, trying to do a run by, which is really going to distract Cal. He gets only two Zerglings through wow. out of six. So that's pretty, pretty effective block there with those probes, um, but Jadong is now going to be able to get inside of his base, see everything he's doing, he's going to harass probes, that kind of thing, and just generally cause mayhem, and uh, you know, this early pressure is just, just the kind of thing that can get inside uh, of a player's head and make them, you know, choke a little bit. We've seen it recently, um, going to have to spoil some other recent games here, I'm sorry to say it, but... Um, you know, recently we saw um, Flash really, really put the pressure on Quanro, and Quanro yeah. just didn't play his best in that series. Um, you know, he's, he's got some experience on the big stage, like Cal does, but not a ton. And so, you know, that may have affected his gameplay. So we may see uh, Jadong trying to do the same exact sort of thing uh, in this well, game. Well, I think, wow, and getting a, a probe kill there, Jadong, uh, really, you know, somebody who can use even just two Zerglings to the maximum effectively. Going in for another kill, that's a second probe kill for Jadong. So uh, that's actually really big. And as Moltrap was saying, not only are you getting a probe kill, you're also messing with the psyche of the other player. Now, Cal is always somebody who seems to be pretty cool and calm. Oh, and a third! Third probe going! down possibly a fourth no not quite yet but look at the micro notice how Jadong is moving away the, the Zergling that's selected there that only has, you know, one or two hit points left. And, uh, wow, just very, very, very high-level play, which is what we'd expect. Going in first with the Zergling that has almost full health there. And uh, looks like one Zergling has one kill. And, and as, of course, Zerglings regain health. So as the Zerglings are running around in the base here, they're slowly regaining health, allowing Jadong to go back in. More Zerglings coming up here right now. They haven't showed Jadong's base quite yet, assuming he's taking up to Lair right now. And another probe kill! That is four total probe kills, three with one, and uh, one kill on the other one there, and uh, Zealot is out, but there's more and more uh, of Zergling streaming up here to try to distract. Yeah, I don't know where Cal Zealot's been, it looks like we've got one Zealot out here, which is probably getting surrounded by these lanes, Doug is surrounded by lanes, that's bad control by Cal, oh, so it looks like Cal is, is a little bit crumbling under the pressure here, maybe the first game, just nervousness is not set off, Jedong is now getting a spy here, but folks, this is the advantage of getting an early pool, um, you know, yeah, you could be behind an economy later on against the Protoss, but when you're able to sneak lanes in like this, it just... You know, you're able to get Lings out faster, you're able to get your tech up faster, and just put a lot of pressure on. In the meantime, Jadong's getting up his third, so the more he puts pressure on the cow, that's longer and longer it takes for Cal to be able to move out his base and also be able to try to stop Jadong's third. So right now, there's no way Cal's going to be, um, you know, sending anything towards Jadong's third. We only saw one Zealot out for Cal, which I was really surprised. I'm not sure why he hasn't been dealing more Zealots. Again, I don't know why he didn't send a Zealot to protect his probes in the base. There were only two Zerglings there. Usually two Zerglings is not enough uh, to do very much harassment, but in this case, I do think it has done quite a bit of harassment. It was yeah. at least three or four probes that went down. You could just see in his base, it looks like Cal does have better saturation now. First Corsair is going to get out, so he's going to scout and see what's going on. Um, although he's not really going to see much except, you know, three hatcheries and the, the extra hatchery going up. Cal is now pushing out with a couple of zealots and a dragoon, but he has to be careful with, with you know, there was already a lot of lings on the field. It looks like most of them now, there, there's not too many left. Uh, Cal has killed most of them off. We do see some eggs morphing there, but it's probably just going to be drones. 
Um, but yeah, at this point, oh, 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 oh out of the wrong place at the wrong time. Out Corsair. of the womb, out of the womb into the grave <laughs> with a purpose, my and friend. And another mistake by Kalt. These little oh, mistakes that just keep adding up. I thought his wall was really good in the beginning. Actually, oh, Muta's are out. Muta's popping. So Muta's already out, and the first Corsair has gone down. Cal is not gonna have enough cans. It looks like he is smartly building a couple cans in his main. So um, that's that, that's decent by Cal, but he only has one dragoon and no corsairs at this point. He's probably gonna have one corsair and one dragoon to fend off. It looks like six Mutas um, and Scourge to take out that first corsair. So Cal is really Really gonna have to be careful with this micro here to take these mutas on. Wow, this is this is really really high pressure, and this is exactly what Jaron should be doing with that early advantage. Now he's coming in to do some harassment as well. Picking off that first Corsair was absolutely crucial. Now he can easily fend off that second Corsair with those Scourge and uh, a third probably pretty easily as well with just the mutas. So he can have these mutas doing a lot of damage for a long time. Um, just coming in doing harassment there. He did get cannons up in his main, so that's gonna is not gonna have to worry on his main too much after all. Um, I, I gotta say. Jadong here is putting a lot of pressure on him, and he's actually doing everything right. And this is kind of a situation where most of the time the Zerg player, especially a Zerg player of his caliber, is going to be able to use that early, early advantage to just put a ton of mid-game pressure and usually win in the mid-game against a Protoss uh, player. But Cal is somehow managing to keep his tech up. He's keeping his tech rate up. He's not slowing yeah. down his tech. He hasn't fallen behind in that. He's still managing to keep his army up. He's still keeping his macro up. So he's actually not as far behind as most Protoss players would be in this situation. Um, but you're right, it's these little things keep adding up, and he can't really... It, any more of those little things, he's not going to be able to come back from it. Like losing... He hasn't done any damage with his Zealots. Um, yeah. He hasn't done any damage with his Corsairs. He's lost... I think it was actually five probes in the beginning, because like the, uh, on the kill counts on the Zerglings, there was actually an extra one on there. Right. Um, so Cal is not quite out of it yet, but he, just all these little things have definitely given uh, Jadong an advantage, and Cal's going to have to do something interesting to, to kind of get back in this. Jadong now feeling confident wow. in his map control to take a fourth base very early, and there's really nothing Cal can do about it. He's just basically right now got to hope he can get his Templar tech up yeah. in time to hold off the Hydras that are bearing down on him right now uh, in order to make it a longer game and try and get some clutch storm drops in or something to come back into the game, because uh, right now he's really, really feeling the pressure. He's going to have to be really defensive. Yeah, I mean, I, I almost think that it, it might even be wise to go for a couple reavers for your front door. Uh, of course, we'll see, you know, Protoss players do that if they're suspecting a Hydra break or something that's going to come in. Just get a reaver or two, place it at your front door there, and did we see, was that a Templar? Templars, two Templars. Okay, so we have the Templars. So, again, Templars, the next best thing. Obviously, the Storm can do a ton of damage. Uh, so I think that Cal is... I totally agree with you, Moltrap. Cal is doing everything he can, man. He is not giving up. Cal is a very strong player, somebody who really knows the game. There's a Dark Templar coming out. Um, two Dark Templars coming out, if he can get them across the map, giving away kind of the position of one of them right there by killing the Zergling, but that was a scouting Zergling, so that's actually not a bad thing to take out. Um, DTs, unfortunately, don't do any good anymore in, in, in PvZ. They used to be, like, so, so clutch, but Zergs have gotten so consistent and so good right. at getting a sunken and overlord in every base right. that it just really doesn't work, especially if you don't have Corsair. Really, the, the most effective DTs are when you can drop them behind with a shuttle, and we haven't seen any shuttle play with Cal yet. So, uh, oh, wow, oh, and there we go, and there's the first DT that is going to go down to Lurkers and to Sunken and Mutalisks. So uh, that DT didn't really have a chance. Yeah, well, I think one um, advantage for Cal on this map, on match point, is there's a really small choke, and so that makes it really easy for him to turtle with his Lulzim City. It looks like he did get one one kill there on his DT. He's going to have to go sacrifice, try to get one more kill. Jadong not pulling his probe, so he's going to lose two more oh. or two more drones there. Um, a little unnecessary if he would have uh, paid more attention there. We do see four High Templar out here for um, Cal, and Cal also switching to Dragoons at this point, so he's going to have a, a relatively decent army to hold off Mutas. Uh, the question is, how big is, is Jadong's economy going to become? It looks like Cal is positioning to take that third base, so that third base is going to be really critical, but I just don't know if he's going to be able to hold it. A Lurker already coming in here. Um, this has been kind of Jadong's signature build lately, is he, he uses that pull to get the quick tech to get the Lurkers out, and at this point, a Protoss player is not going to have Observers out, and Storm, they're actually missing, so first Storm doing oh, no damage. Something. Second Storm, that was the second Storm that oh, did okay. do some damage, but, but at this point, Lurkers are containing uh, nicely spread out there, so Storms will not do as much damage. They can't kill more than one Lurker at once. So like you said, Jadong doing a lot of things right here. Again, Cal does have that door that he can fall back to, but the problem is if he can never get this third base up, he's not going to be in a good position oh. later on in the game. He does have a lot of Dragoons there, but again, no Observers at this point, so there's no way he can push out. There's the um, Robox facility now. They're looking for the Observatory. There's the Observatory just on your screen, so he is going to have Observers out in about 20 seconds, but it might be too late if Jadong pushes in right now with the Lurkers. He does push in with the Hydras. Uh. He is forcing a storm. Beautiful 
beautiful storm dodge. Another storm um, hitting the lurker, but again, there's a lot of hydras. Oh, really oh! good storm there for Cal. Does get quite a few hydras, but again, Jaden is just pushing in, and now oh, the Nexus gets focused yeah. down. So I feel that Jaden's gonna or Cal's gonna have to just continually fall back until he can get some observers out. And most of his storm has been used at this point, so he's not gonna have very much storm left to push out if he does want to push out. Well, and that that was, I mean, the High Templars were other than a few cannons, one of the primary defenses for his natural, and he just used a lot of storms. Um, I'm actually surprised Jadon, well, he probably didn't have enough units yet, but if Jadon were to go for a double attack and do one attack at the third base, wow, and another careless mistake by Cal. Cal cannot be losing the Corsairs. In fact, he needs to be using those Corsairs to try to snipe some Overlords or, or two to try to take down the food count to try to distract Jadon just a little bit. Right now, this Jadon, this Jadon, this game has been in Jadon's hands uh, pretty much this entire time. Now, Cal doing a good job with Storms, losing another Corsair. God, I feel like I'm watching a Terran player that's losing Science Vessels, although obviously science vessels are a little bit more important in that kind of game. Big attack going in here. A lot of Zerglings coming in, trying to get surrounds of the Dragoons. That Dragoon's going to go down, burrowing and moving up Lurkers perfectly, leapfrogging Lurkers right into the third base here. And Observer's just now coming out. There is an Observer out there. And uh, you know what? Okay, Cal, you can lose your Corsairs, but don't lose your Observers. All right? Don't pull a Stork. Don't lose your Observers. We need to see those so that you can try to push out here. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Cal trying to move up this ramp. He desperately needs to get out of here. Oh, there goes one observer. The other second observer running for his dear life. The oh, dragoon is not oh, able to protect oh, it, distracted oh. by Zerglings. And, guys, I am really... Oh! Am oh, my, oh my God. God! Tons of oh. Zerglings coming in from both sides. Cal is going to get slaughtered all the way back to his natural expansion. Guys, I am really concerned for Jadon right now because... He always loses the first game and then wins the next three, and he's clearly not going to lose <laughs> the game. There's GG. Cal wow. going down absolutely emphatically to Jadong in the first game. Jadong just totally taking command of that game from start to finish and not letting Cal have an inch, not even a tenth of an inch, not even any other smaller uh, fraction of a, a small <laughs> unit of length measurement. Well, thank you, thank you. And you could just see the intensity on Jadong's face. That was the beast mode that we like to see. That's right. um, he, he certainly can be in a position where up game one, it's hard to know if he might just be unstoppable at this point. I do think, though, that, that some of those early game antics by Kel, um, not sending a zealot to, to help protect his probes, losing more probes than he needed to, to two um, Zerglings, obviously that's something that Jadong does really well, as Micro says Zerglings really well, but at the same time that can be looked at as possibly just um, nerves for um, Cal, maybe. You can see he was already sweating there, as Jadon wasn't sweating at all, so um, Cal might be a little nervous, and usually that wears off after the first game, so I do think that we are going to see, hopefully, a, a better second game, but what yeah. Jadon did was actually kind of a build I, I, I kind of expected, because we've been seeing a lot more Zergs, Jadon in particular, going pull first. Um, a lot of times, Zergs will go, you know, a, a 12 hatch, and that's kind of what we've seen as the standard but lately, a lot of Zergs have been getting that pulldown faster. And what's great about that is it allows you to get the Zerglings out that much quicker. It also allows you to get your tech up that much quicker. And it's just more of an aggressive way to take control over the map, you know, take map control. Um, and as right. you saw, Jaden was able to get his third hatchery up without really any contention from Cal. And that is a map where I really expected to see Cal maybe push out with, like, a, you know, plus one Zealot attack or something like that because there's so much distance between that third base and your second that... The, right. You know, it's definitely vulnerable to that attack. So the, the fact that Jedi went pull first really protected his third hatchery and allowed him to get, you know, the economy up. And then from there, we just saw him build a bunch of circlings and yeah, hydras I, and larchers. I, I, I think he basically, I love that. that was really cool. He knew that Cal had no more storm. He knew that Cal was being forced to build more dragoons and less Templar because of all the lurkers all over the place. So he's like, well, no storm. That means masslings for the win. He had his hive up, so he may have had crack upgrade as well. Which, you know, doubles the, the efficiency of the Zergling. So, yeah. Yeah, just. Um I, lo wow. I very, love to very, see that. Very, very epic finish. Yeah. Be being a Zerg player myself, and you as, you as well, Moltrap, that's. that's. I mean, if you're going to get overrun by a Zerg, get overrun <laughs> the, the right way by a Zerg. With 50 Zerglings at your doorstep, that's obviously an exaggeration. Um, but. But that was good. All right. Well, we are uh, we have a lull between games here. Yeah. So uh, those of you that are watching on YouTube uh, later on, we're gonna go ahead and stop the video here, and right. uh, you're just gonna be able to move on to game two. Those of you that are watching live, 
We're just gonna have some other antics that we're, we're just talking. Yes, talk- we, we have some interesting stuff. We have some cool stuff to show you in between games, and um, I guess maybe we'll put the links to some of the stuff we show we in, in the video description on YouTube later on. But uh, in the meantime, don't go away. Stick around. We're gonna Thanks. just chat about the maps and stuff uh, until the next game starts. All right. <laughs>